I'm Jake Bruton and welcome back. And today we have a topic that out of the 300 and something Build Show Network videos that we've made, we have absolutely never covered as far as I can tell. We are at one of our custom homes. This one's here in DeSoto, Kansas. We have a custom home, three, four bedrooms with an indoor pool. We have a second building, a shop, nice piece of property, really interesting, lots of building science-y stuff going on. And I'm gonna take you out back because I wanna talk about this one thing that we've never talked about. Let's do it now. Okay, so that thing that we've never talked about before on this channel is a deck. And the reason we've never talked about it is because when it comes to deck framing and decking materials, in my opinion, I've never been that particularly interested in deck framing because it's kind of, in my opinion, like the least complicated framing that we do outside of the like small minutia things that we do to make decks better. It doesn't involve any of the building science things that I get super excited about. Most people look at the deck as a thing that we don't have long drawn out conversations about. Yeah, we want a deck. Yeah, we want it to look like this. It needs to be this size. And so it's just a thing that up until this point we've overlooked. But why have that conversation today if I still kind of feel that way about them? Well, because we're doing something different on this deck and I think it's really interesting and it's the material that we're looking at here, the material that I'm sitting on and it is PWT treated LVLs. The entire substructure for this deck outside of the posts are made from PWT treated LVLs. Why make this change is the question of the day, I guess. So I think the place to start here is what's the difference between this and dimensional pressure treated lumber? Uh, I think it's important to note even just the nomenclature that I've used so far. PWT treated LVL and pressure treated uh, Southern Yellow Pine in our market. It's not the same as some say on the uh, West Coast, you get incised lumber where they actually use something that's a little more hard to begin with and they have to poke holes in it to get the pressure treating to go further. Here in the Midwest, we get Southern Yellow Pine that they just pressurize that and get the chemical to soak into the wood. Here in the manufacturing process of the LVL, that glue, that, that material process, the way that this is manufactured, the treating is throughout the board. So while PWT does say when you cut it, you should reseal the end, it's not required, it's recommended. That's just to keep it from giving a little bit of swell over time. It's not that you're actually exposing part of the board that is not treated. So if you were to take and slice a pressure treated uh, Southern Yellow Pine board like I would normally be sitting on instead of the LVL material, you would see that perimeter of treating material uh, soaking into the lumber, but you would also see a core that is not uh, treated. And so therefore, if you cut that pressure treated lumber, you have to treat that. Otherwise, you're exposing something that's not treated to the, uh, to the elements. That's not the case with this, meaning it's actually <laughs> gonna be okay to expose it to the elements in the long term. So number one, outside of all the other benefits that we talk about today, that should be enough of a conversation for you to go, oh, this is a completely different thing when we're looking at, we're putting a wood product outside. There are a few products in that realm that you like look at in our industry and you go, oh, this is something different. Uh, I would equate this to say, like when we have the conversation about is zip sheathing uh, OSB. It is, but it's a completely different thing than commodity grade OSB. They are similar products. You know, there's a treating process that makes it be okay to be outside. That's what they do to pressure treated lumber. It's a similar thing, but it is not the same thing. And so I'm more willing to take a different tact with this and be excited about this in a different way than I would a pressure treated deck. So what does the manufacturer say about putting this outside? There are some stamps here. I'm not sure if you can see it from the camera or not. 
there is a 25 year warranty on this material. That means that the manufacturer agrees with me on this topic. They agree that this should be able to be outside for 25 years and not fall apart. Guess what? With a pressure treated deck, you don't get a warranty on that material. That wood product that you're putting outside doesn't carry any sort of warranty. And when it comes to decks, uh, what are we putting on the surface of this anymore? We're not putting a wood product on the top anymore. We're putting things like a tile decking or a synthetic decking or a metal or a concrete pan. Or There's all sorts of things that we're going to put on top of this that are 25 year plus products that are going to sit on top of this. We're not putting a treated floor or a cedar floor hardly anymore. We're putting something that is going to be a longevity based product that for the clients, why would we put a non-warrantied, not as long lasting substructure and then put something on the top that potentially at some point we strip off, we replace the substructure and then have to put back because we made a poor selection choice underneath. You see the same thing with other contractors or with other uh, products as well. There's a huge market for the substructure underneath lasting longer because there's been such a push for the surface that you actually get to touch and feel to last longer. And that side of the market has been an amazing uh, jump forward in the last few years. And I think it's great that PWT has responded as well. And now that we have something that has a 25 year warranty. Now, I'm sitting on an unfinished product as well. Uh, besides not having all of our hardware, we're also missing our tape layer. The tape is required. There are a couple different tapes that they recommend. I'm going to say we're going to use G-Tape, which is, I think, kind of their uh, first go-to on the recommendations. G-Tape also gives you a 25-year warranty on their tape. So 25-year warranty, 25-year warranty. A lot of the synthetic deckings have 25-year warranties. Are you catching a theme here? Like we have the ability to walk away from this with our clients and say, hey, check this out. We have a 25 year warranty on this product. You have every reason to think that this thing's going to last. And we have a product here that is going to go well with everything else that we've done on this high performing building. So let's talk about the other benefits that I've seen working with the product and our, our crew working with the product here. Number one, they packed less material around the backside of this building. These LVLs, because the treatment is in the glue up process, it's not the same wet based treatment where you have pressure treated drying out on the job after it gets here. This stuff wasn't soaking wet when they moved it to the back. It was a dry material when it arrived. It didn't change sizes or dry out after it got here. So we didn't have big heavy treated material that we had to pack around back. There was less of it because we have longer spans and uh, it's actually dimensionally smaller than what we would need if we were using dimensional lumber. So think of this as the same idea of when we talk about LVLs inside the building. Before we talk about flat and straight, let's talk about the structural side and let's think about when we use LVLs inside the building. So if we were to use an LVL inside the building for a structural header, we use them in our instance because we can a lot of times get away with a one ply uh, instead of a two ply with dimensional lumber, meaning we get a better structural element out of an LVL product than we do out of dimensional lumber. The exact same thing applies here where we have um, a two by 10 dimensional lumber is now a two by eight uh, PWT treated LVL. That means we're packing lighter material around back still. And that two by eight, because it's an LVL, is straighter and more dimensionally accurate. And they're all the exact same size. When we use LVLs in the other instance inside the building, uh, our scope of work that I write for every project says clear story walls, and walls that get tile and walls that get cabinets. Well, why would we be worried about walls that get cabinets and walls that get tile? I can understand a clear story wall that's tall. We have different bearing capacities, things like that. But why cabinets and tile? Because they're straight. That's the exact same argument that we have here. The process of hanging these, the carpenters aren't crowning them. They're not looking for uh, errors in the boards. 
They, uh, because this deck is on a, uh, an angle, the, our outer rim is on an angle, they didn't hang, they didn't pre-hang their joist hangers, but if we were working with a uh, square deck, we already, I already talked to our lead carpenter and he was like, yeah, we absolutely would have hung our uh, hangers first because we could have just racked every single joist in and not had to do any toenailing to hold them in place at the beginning. That would have saved us a ton of time. We have a little bit of finicky nature because we're trying to make sure that this outer beam is completely straight. We want it to just be perfect. And so they're finagling a little as they go with the joists. But now we have completely dead and flat, no crowning, no, one, no worrying about heavy, out of wonky dimensional lumber. It's just a system that has been less of a headache, less question marks, less dealing with the things that we get when we deal with a tree that's been cut down and then let to dry and pumped full of chemicals before it gets here. It's also super important to note that uh, like other LVL manufacturers, these guys are run at links long enough to put on a semi. So if you're ordering these, you can order at a length long enough to do a deck in one shot, even if you had a midpoint bearing uh, you can do substantially longer cantilevers. You can do something in the 20 foot range with a two by 12 without a midpoint bearing. You can do three, four, five foot cantilevers potentially. Uh, and the awesome part with PWT, they have an engineering team that's here to help, to help with the design, to help call out what you're going to do to allow you to save the material, to save the time, to save the money to make it worth using this product, to make it so that this is an easy justification where you're not just saying, oh, I wanna swap this out and use this other product. You can say, I wanna swap this out. I wanna pay for less material total. I wanna pay for less labor. I wanna spend less time on this. And I wanna have a higher quality product overall. Like it all maths out in the end to be something that I think once you build one, you're gonna understand why the product stays on the market long-term here. Stay tuned, because I think you're gonna like the way this deck turns out in the end. Uh, and we're gonna let the guys get back to work because they're taking lunch and they're kind of done with lunch now. So, till next time, have a good day.